Let's get ready for the word. God's got a word for us tonight. Amen. Ready? All right, on the count of three, let's shout this hallelujah and let's send it around the world. Let's do it like we mean it. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Praise God. You guys sound awesome. Amen. That feels good. That feels good to be able to release the highest praise. Boy, you know, there was a dear price paid for you to be able to do that. Amen. Amen. You, you just that didn't just come easy. Jesus paid with his life so that you can experience this power and this connection. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word tonight. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, Lord, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said, amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Praise God. This is what this is all about now. Uh, I've been saved for some time, but uh, just being saved ain't enough. Right. Amen. Let me just tell you that. Just because you're saved don't mean you're going to automatically win. Right. Amen. Just because you're saved don't mean that, okay, everything's just going to get easy for you. No, you have to intentionally seek victory. You've got to go after victory with some some serious intent like I'm planning to win and so I'm going to do what I need to do to win and what I've learned in my Christian walk and I thank God that he gave me a passion for it but I realized that bless you I realized that without the word I can't win Amen. that's what I realized I realized that if I don't have the word there's no victory I met a lot of people in my my day uh, and even a lot of Christians, but, um, you know what? Not everybody, uh, puts the emphasis on the word that I do. Well, maybe they know another way to win, but I don't. Amen. The only way I know how to win is with this Bible. And so everything else is delayed failure. And so you, you might meet a lot of people in your life and you wonder why they are on a constant roller coaster. Chances are. They're not consistent with this. You want to get off the roller coaster of life? You want to get off of this highs and lows and all that? You know, man, I could just start preaching right there on that, man. Uh, you know, this brings consistency to your life. This brings some consistency. If you can get a hold of this Bible and you can become diligent in it and train, you know, don't just read. No, I'm in training, man. I'm training. Well, this thing will bring consistency to your life. You're going to find yourself winning more often than not. Amen. Oh, man. Y'all want me to preach this? You, man, I, I'm telling you, I said, Lord, now you've been giving it to us. So we got to take it serious. You know, you're going to find yourself winning more often than not. Amen. You're going to find yourself experiencing abundant health more often than not. Come on, you're going to find yourself experiencing God's provision more often than not. Not to say you'll never go through anything, but if you got the word, y'all with me? If you got the word, then now things are going to work out for you. Amen. Things are going to work out for you and things are going to get better. Um, we have this series here for Wednesdays that we've been um, preaching. Actually, I, this is going to be a new series starting tonight. And this series is entitled Foundation. And we're going to dig into some stuff, man, some core issues that we need to get right in our Christian walk. And so uh, Foundation and the subtitle of tonight's message is The Deity of Christ. The Deity of Christ. This right here is big, you know, and, and these are some foundational truths that I learned in my, my, my walk with God, but it helped me to gain the stability that I needed because uh, there's a lot of uh, false truths out there. There's a lot of half truths out there. You know, there's a lot of people that are just walking around in ignorance. If you are walking around in ignorance, it's going to be easy for you to be deceived. It's going to be easy for you to be tricked. Amen. Easy for you to be deceived 
easy for you to be tricked. And so I want to just help us with these uh, core issues so that we can just make sure we understand it. And so the, the deity of Christ. So the question is, who is Jesus? That's the big question. That's the question that's created all the problems. Amen. That's the question uh, that actually, that's actually, uh, this is the major dividing line between religions. You know, religions separate right there. Who is Jesus? Uh, some people, you know what? They, they believe that he was a prophet. Amen. They'll accept that and they say, yeah, he was a prophet. I respect that. Um, some believe that he was a religious figure, a teacher, a healer. Some even believe, believe it or not, that some believe he's Satan's brother. Now, these are all things that you can, you know, I'm not out here to uh, speak against all these different things, but I happen to be one that has studied most all of them, not to study them like I believed in it, but it was when I first got saved, God was just sending all these people to me. And so they were talking this stuff that wasn't true. And so I learned about it. I learned about what Jehovah Witness believe. I learned about what the Mormons believe. I learned about what the Muslims believe. I learned about all of it. And um, it's all false. But the thing that's the real big issue with all of them is who is Jesus? And so we are Christians. Look at your name and say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Are you really? Yeah. Are, you at home? are you at home? You're Christian? You know what I'm saying? I'm a Christian. I mean, that, that term is used loosely, isn't it? I'm a Christian. Well, what does that mean? It means to be Christ-like, right? But what do you believe? Who is Jesus? I don't know. Well, you said you're a Christian. So you got to know, right? You, you can't not know. As Christians, we believe that Jesus is God in human form. That's just the truth. And why do we believe this? Because the word says it. I'm going to teach you tonight so that we can clear up some confusion. But we believe that he is God in human form. We believe in the Trinity, right? The Father. Come on, y'all. I'm saying, man, Lord, we got to really go back to the basics. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the Trinity. And so we believe that this is God expressing himself in three persons. Amen. So what does this mean? It means that all three are one. Amen. So God, the father is the head. I've taught this all, all these years. God, the son, which is Jesus is the right arm. Holy Ghost is the left. Amen. See that it makes up the cross. But that's the Trinity. So what happens? They're all connected, right? Now, God the Father's in heaven controlling everything. He sends Jesus the Son down there to fix man's sins, prop, sin problems. He dies, pays, and all that stuff. Ascends. You guys know Jesus is not here, right? In the physical form anymore. He's in us, but he's not, you know. You guys know his tomb was empty. Y'all know that, right? And out of all the, I mean, think about it. If this was fraudulent, don't you think they should have figured that out by now? Out of all these years, over 2,000 years, if this wasn't the truth, they should have found Jesus by now. I mean, they've been digging up everything. But you can't find nothing that's not there. Because he ascended, amen? And then now, what happens when he ascended? I'm just giving y'all some basic teaching. What happens next? Okay, so... You don't have to turn there, but John 14, 26, he says, I'm going to send the comforter. That's the paracletos. That is the Holy Ghost. And so now that is our connection. So the Holy Ghost comes and now he's in us. Amen. Amen. And so for the purpose of tonight, we want to really dig into this. Who is Jesus? And the Bible gives us all the proof we need. But remember, you got to be willing to commit to this. You got to be willing to read it. You got to be willing to ask the Holy Ghost to give you understanding. Now, here's the other thing. You can't, if you read this without the Holy Ghost, you won't get it. There's stuff in there, there's secrets in there that you just won't get. It won't make sense. But the Holy Spirit will cause this to come alive. Amen? 
All right, so let's go to 1 John 5, 7 in the King James. 1 John 5, 7 in the King James. We'll just start here and, and you know, uh, you want to be equipped. You want to know what you believe. 1 John 5, 7. So here it is. He says, so now we believe in the Trinity, right? Just say amen. amen. All right. Well, why do we believe that? It's in the Bible. He says here, 1 John 5, 7, for there are three. Luke, your name say three. Three, three means Trinity. Y'all got it? Okay. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? Okay, now, as I teach, I, I typically go to different translations to give us a greater de degree of understanding. But some of this stuff, you got to stay King James because uh, some of the other translations will twist it. And they might mix the words up and they may say these three agree in one or something like that. But no, these three are one. Amen. Okay, so he says, I'll read it again. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay, now let's go to John. John chapter 1. This is one of those good sermons that just, you know, take some notes because you might be challenged with some of this. Somebody may challenge you and you may have to be able to go Bible on them. Amen. I'm telling you, that got me out of every, every situation. I just went Bible on them. And they're like, you know, people don't want you to go Bible. You know what I'm saying? They want you to, you know, believe something else. They want you to go the easy route. They don't want you to be able to navigate. See, if you can't pull this out and defend yourself, you're going to be in trouble. That's why you got you to gotta know how to go Bible on them. So John 1, John 1. I'll just start reading. We'll read a few verses here. It says, in the beginning was the word. Okay, y'all see that? In the King James, the word, notice the W. As we continue to read this, you'll see the W is what? Capitalized. Capitalized. Why? Because it's referring to a person. And so it's just like your name. If you write your name down. Your name should be written. The first letter of your name should be what? Capitalized. Capitalize, right. And so I'm going to I'm going to show you this connection. Now, remember, first uh, John five, seven. There are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word and the Holy Ghost. The word is Jesus. Amen. Look at your name and say the word is Jesus. Word is Jesus. Look back at him and say, Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. OK, now. With us understanding that clearly, let's start reading John 1 again. In the beginning was the Word. Look at your name and say, that's Jesus. that's Jesus. All right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What does that say? The Word was God. Jesus was God. How can we replace Jesus with the Word? Because Jesus is the word, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light. Let's see. That was the true light. OK, you guys notice something else about the light. Oh, man, it's capital. OK, so Jesus is the word and Jesus is the light. Amen. And so it's clearly explaining this to us. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. Who was in the world? Jesus, who is God, 
in the flesh. And this is what this is explaining to us. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Now, you guys see how this is getting real clear? Because he's telling you who it was, but then he's telling you, wait, he was in the world and the world was made by him. Nobody else was in the world who made the world. Nobody else can make these claims. Nobody else can make these claims. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. All you guys got to do is think about the story of Jesus. How he was received. How he was rejected. Now, verse 12, he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so now those that believe gain power. Those that do not believe are left out. That's just the way it is. Amen. He gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, look at your name and say, that's Jesus. Okay, now look at this. If anybody ever tries to stump you or causes you to question who is Jesus, these are simple scriptures I'm giving you as ammunition. Verse 14, it says, and the word was made flesh. So here it is. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now, let's read this, this uh, in the same text. Let's read John one. But let's just read verse one in the Amplified. And he says here in the Amplified in the beginning before all time was the word. But then they explain it to us. What's next to it? Oh, so that's telling you who it is. Now, Jesus, we know Jesus, but there are other people in the Bible named Jesus. Did you guys know that? But there's only one Jesus Christ. Y'all with me? Because the word Christ means the anointed one who has the anointing. Amen. And so what's important for us to note is the Christ on the end. So he says in the beginning before all time. So what, when is that? When is before all time? Man, I mean, wait, if you was here before all time, you might be God. <laughs> I'm I'm, Y'all with me? Before all time. And so in the beginning, be, before all time was the word, which is Christ. And the word was with God and the word was God. What? Is that clear? And the word was God himself. And so now you understand why we believe Jesus is God. Y'all with me? That's why we believe it. Now, our evidence is in the Bible and we happen to be a people who believe the Bible. Now, Jesus tried to help people when he was here in the earth. He came to take care of our sin problem, but he also came to be an example. And he also declared himself who he was. Amen. He declared himself who he was. Let's go over to John. We're in John, but let's go up to John 10, John 10. And we'll look at verse 25. We just got to teach through some of this so we can get a, a strong foundation of it. You know, I, I, when I first became a Christian, I didn't really know all of this. Now, I'll, I'm going to help you know that this, even though I'm teaching you and then it still has to be received by faith. Because it's not going to make sense logically. And so most of us, we start out, we just receive Jesus and then we start learning later. Amen. And so he says here in John 10, uh, let's see, what do I want to start? 25. Well, actually, I'll, I'll start in 24. He says, uh, so then came the Jews round about him and said 
unto him, How long doest thou make us, us doubt? If thou be the Christ, then tell us plainly. Because Jesus would tell them, but they wouldn't really hear him. I mean, now somebody could be saying something, but if you don't want to hear, you ain't going to hear it. They're telling you something and the answer is right there, but you don't want to hear. And so the truth could be right in front of you, right in your face. But if you don't want to hear it, you, you ever been there where well, you don't want to hear it. If you don't want to hear it, it could be said, but you won't hear it. And somebody that's in the same room could have heard it. And then they can tell you later, he, he just said it. And you'd be like, no, he didn't. Oh, well, you didn't have ears to hear. Amen. And so these people did not want to hear him. How I many know if you're trying to prove that somebody is wrong, then all you're going to hear and listen is something that would help you build your case. Y'all with me? You're not going to hear the story, the full story. You're going to only grab what's going to help you build your case. Amen? Amen. You know, lawyers are not looking to hear everything, they want to hear what's going to build their case. They're going to try to pick out something that's going to build their case. Amen. And so Jesus was stating who he was. But they weren't trying to hear it. He had been telling them continuously. He, they said, well, if you know, if it's you, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them. I told you and you believed not. And so what does he say? He says, I already told you. You're trying to tell me to tell you again. I already told you. But you don't believe not. Now, now watch how Jesus now. Now we understand that he wasn't the baby in the manger. You know, sometimes it's okay for you to be direct. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to be, you know, you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be like, just, man, you're just mean. No, but you can just be direct. You haven't met those people that just are direct, but they're not mean, but they'll just tell you something, you know? And they just tell you, I mean, it's true. You know what I mean? But, but, but you might not have wanted to hear it, but they'll just tell you. You know, sometimes they could tell you with a smile, you know. But Jesus was very direct. And he's starting to tell them now, isn't this good? If, if you are for some reason not hearing. Now, God's not going to tell this to us because we are his you know children we believe in him but it's good to help somebody say man you know the reason you can't hear oh man we'd be kind of cold if we did this sometimes i'd be wanting to do this as a pastor but i can't always do it you say i don't know why stuff ain't going i know why it ain't going right i know why You know what I mean? I got to, you know, I got to kind of be a little sweet and, you know, nice. But sometimes it's like, it ain't going right because. <laughs> and so Jesus is saying, I told y'all. But you know why you didn't hear me? Well, let's, let's look at this. He says, I told you, but you believe me not. Because you are not my sheep. <laughs> wow, now that is tough. You didn't hear me, man. Because you're not my sheep. Oh, man, if you said that to some Christians, they would be ready to stone you like they wanted to stone Jesus right here. Amen. They'd be ready to stone you. <laughs> All right. So he says here, I told you and you believe me not. Okay. Now. I'll, I'll read 25 again. I, I kind of skipped over that. But Jesus says, I told you, and you believe me not. He says, the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. And so he says, I've given you, I've told you, but I've also given you evidence. And then now verse 26, but you believe not because you're not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So Jesus even said that already. Why do you want me to keep explaining it? You're not going to hear me. You don't belong to me. Oh, you know, sometimes... Is it, now, we might have this uh, mindset that we've got to evangelize the world. We've got to convince the world. How many know sometimes you just going to have to let them find out another way? You ever met those people? You can talk them up and down and they still, they, they always got to come back. 
I, I just, they, they always got to come this stick headed. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, OK, I'm done with all of this. You don't understand because you're not with him, man. You ain't with Jesus. <laughs> they would be upset. But sometimes you just got to stop. You know, you got to stop trying to convince everybody because Jesus, listen, evangelism is sharing the truth. But people got to receive it. Evangelism is not going around arguing with people and convincing them. That is not evangelism. Evangelism is not you walking around debating with everybody and trying to convince them that Jesus is Lord. Evangelism is you telling the world that Jesus is Lord and you helping those who are ready to receive. Y'all with me? I had to learn this. It was a, a, a clear lesson God really told me. It's just you don't need to debate with anybody. If they don't believe it, no matter what you say, you can't convince them. You can stand there and talk to them for three hours and they will not convert. And while you spent that three hours talking to them, there were 10 people I had who were hungry, who needed no explanation. They just needed to hear the name Jesus. And I would have sent you over there and you would have just said, Jesus is Lord. And they would say, yes, I receive it. And they would have followed you. People you got to argue, persuade, convince. That's the wrong ones. Amen. Jesus did not take that approach. He dealt with them firmly, directly, told them, yeah, you don't hear me because you're not mine. OK, now, I believe if they will repent, he will receive them. But that's another thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get on these side tangents, but don't argue with unrepented people. Don't argue with unrepent you ain't repented man you god is not giving you nothing you are out of the blessing so why am i spending my time talking to you first thing you have to do is repent and then we can talk y'all with me all right and so he says um i'll read verse 26 again he says but you believe not because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Then he says here, um, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. What do they do? They follow him because they're his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. That's us, right? We hear his voice. We're not looking to argue and debate with God. We hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And so now we're talking about the rewards for those that believe. My father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now look at this. This next verse is simple, but you got to be able to clear up all these arguments. He says here, I and my father, y'all see this? I and my father agree together. Huh? I and my father are on the same page. No, I and my father are what? That's why this, that's why they want to stone. So what, so, you know, verse 31, he just says, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They can't handle that truth right there because they, this was beyond their realm of understanding. I mean, if you think about it, this thing doesn't make sense, church. I've been saying this for a long time. This does not make sense. Wait a minute. What do you mean? You're God, but you know, God is still up there, but you down here. Wait, what's going on, man? You're God, but God's up there and you down here, but, but you saying you God. I'm going to have to stone you. <laughs> Why? Because that's beyond our ability to understand. We just simply have to receive it 
And then now the Holy Spirit will start to enlighten you. He'll start to have you grab a hold of this and you start to, oh, you, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Triune Trinity. Well, you know what? We're triune beings as well. Did you know that? You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have what? A body. That's three. You are a triune being. Well, you're created after God. And so he says here, um, I and my father are one. So he makes it very clear. But once again, this does not make sense. It's beyond logic and can only be received by faith. Can only be received by faith. Now go to John 14. John 14. Can only be received by faith. John 14 and verse 6. John 14, verse 6, he says, Jesus says unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now look at this. Now, you would think that if you're with him, you would know him. But even sometimes people that were with him, they did not necessarily receive who he truly was. And they didn't know themselves. Verse 7, he says, if if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. What does that mean? If you have seen, if you have known me, you should have known my father. Why? Because me and my father are one. And so he says here, and from henceforth, you shall know him and what? Have seen him. Well, how did they see the, how could they have seen the father? Because they saw Jesus. And that's what he's trying to tell. And that's the, the thing that he's trying to make crystal clear. You've already seen him. Everybody's talking about, well, show us the father. Well, he said, you've already seen him if you've seen me. You've already. Now, this is something that we've got to grab a hold of. Because if we can't grab it at this level, then now when we start advancing in this thing and Jesus starts talking about, you know what? I'm in you. And the father's in you, too. And so is the Holy Ghost. And you got all this power and you can do all this stuff. You're going to doubt it. But you've got to get the beginning truth on this and understand who Jesus was and who he made, who he spoke, how he spoke of himself and how clear he made it. Amen. And so he says here, uh, verse seven again, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth. You know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth us. What? Man, after all that I just said, I mean, isn't that something? You know, God can do some amazing stuff and then some people will still come up with some. And you're like, what? How? You still don't get it? Man. And so Jesus says unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet has you, has thou not known me, Philip? He's like, Philip, what's going on? What you been doing, man? I've been with you this whole time. Who you been paying attention to? You know what I mean? What, what's, what is happening with you? And he said, uh, he that had seen me had seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? If you've seen me, you don't need to see the Father. You've already seen the Father. Amen. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So now Jesus is trying to convince him but he's like okay I know this is hard for you to understand but what about the works at, le uh, at least ex you know believe that and that's how sometimes people get a hold of Jesus is, is through him doing some work you know sometimes when you experience his uh, power in an unexplainable way him fixing things that any of you guys ever got anything fixed that you would had no way of fixing it 
You had already run out of options. You know what I'm saying? You had already just, because, you know, uh, it's, it's okay for us to think like, okay, it could be fixed this way. God could do this. God, it could be, and then God fixes it some other way that's totally beyond what you thought. And you cannot explain it based on the natural realm we're in. You just have to step back and say, God did it. But now you just got to believe that. You just got to believe it. How many of you guys have been to heaven and back? Anybody here? You've been to heaven and back? How many of you believe you're going? Well, why do you believe? What's that? Oh, see? Faith. Now, nobody's trying to get to heaven right away. But we can all walk around talking about we believe this. Well, Jesus was trying to get Philip to understand, man, I'm with you. I'm doing all these things, but yeah, you're still doubting. You're still waiting for me to show you a sign. It's just like us today. We can say that, you know what? Um, God is real. Okay. Well, why are you stressing about your bills then? God is real. Why are you stressing about your health then? What, what's going on? I thought you said God is real. Well, he is. Well, well, what do you know about him? How do you know he's real? You, you see what I'm saying? Well, well, I know I'm going to heaven. Well, how do you know? I mean, he don't want to help you pay your bills, but he want to take you to heaven. I mean, that don't even make no sense. I mean, he don't want to pay your bills. He want to help you with your bills, but he going to take you to some place that's so great. Got streets of gold and all this stuff. And you going, you going there and you got a mansion too. Okay. That's what people that are not Christians will say to Christians. Because, but now when you say, oh, no, no, I ain't worried about this. No. I ain't worried about these bills. I ain't worried about none of this. God's got it all. Really? Oh, yeah. God, watch. I'll let you know. He's coming through and he's going to come through quick. And I'll tell you about it when he does it. God's going to work it out. What? What God? The same God that's going, that I'm going to heaven to see. He's in me. And this, all this stuff is getting fixed. See, we can't be people that's believing for heaven and all this type of stuff. And we can't even believe for, you know, can't even just believe to get through a little traffic jam. You know what I'm saying? You got to ask yourself, who are you really believing? Well, the devil is trying to get you away from this. He's trying to get you away from this truth so that it can't manifest so that you can't get these benefits that God has coming your way. We've got to leave this logic and get in the truth. And then if we do this, if we would just be believers now, if you can receive it by faith, just like you can receive heaven, right? By faith. If you can receive everything in regards to God by faith, even receiving who Jesus is by faith. It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't even make sense for a person to be born from a virgin. How does that happen? Right? People can't do that. You just can't just show up pregnant. Not in this natural realm. But that's the way Jesus was born. What about this? The angel showed up to Mary and told Mary she was about to have a baby. That didn't make any sense at all. But you know what Mary said? Mary said, be it unto me. Well, do you think she understood that? Do you think she had any kind of scientific research to back that up? She just said, okay. Well, sometimes that's how we have to be. We just got to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to just trust you. I'm not, I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to trust you. Now, some of these basic things, they are explained, and Jesus is trying to help him. He's trying to help Philip, and because here's the reason why we've got to understand this, is he wanted to prepare Philip so that now we can go on and start doing these greater things that God has in store for us. As we continue in our text, he says, Verily, verily, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works shall these do, because I go unto my Father. And so he's saying, if you would believe in me. Now, what he's really saying is, I'm going to be leaving here. 
I'm not staying here forever. I'm leaving so that the Holy Ghost can come. And he tells us, you know, in verse, you don't have to turn there, but in 26, how the Father's going to send the Holy Ghost. Actually, just read 26 real quick. John 14, 26. He says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. And so now this is our security. This is our comfort. This is our connection, right? It's the Holy Spirit. Have you guys, and maybe, maybe this happened to you guys. I know it happened to me. Did you ever try to read the Bible before you were saved? Anybody? I tried, man. I mean, I, you know, I might've thought, I didn't even know what the word saved meant. But I probably thought I was saved and I'm calling myself trying to read some. I didn't get it. But then I got saved for real, got the Holy Ghost and was able to read the King James. The thousand, those and all that and was getting revelation out of that thing. How does that happen? That's supernatural, man. That's supernatural. Well, that's what Jesus was saying. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. He's going to teach you everything and all this stuff is going to work out. Now, you've got to receive all of this stuff by faith. If you receive it by faith, you get the power. What power are we talking about? Greater works. If you receive it by faith, you get the power. If you can receive it by faith, you'll get the authority. Come on, somebody. You'll get the victory. But you're going to have to start out by receiving it by faith. Now, here's what the devil's doing. The enemy is trying to keep you from all of this. He's trying to keep you from receiving this. He's trying to get you to complicate things. You know, analytical people are sometimes hard to convince. How do I know? I was analytical. Amen. Oh, yeah, you know what? But you know what? God used that for his glory. Because when I got in all these different, you know, people trying to convince me some of some false truth, I didn't fall for it because I was too analytical. I was like, no, but how about the next verse? Uh, let's keep reading. What about that one? And so I was too analytical to just fall for it. But then at some point, I had to just believe that this is true. And I had to just let God start to take over. Because sometimes God wants to do stuff in my life that does not make sense to me. That I do not have, I cannot calculate it out. And I may not even know all the steps. I don't know how to plan for it. Amen. There's some things that God wants to do for you that you can't plan for. But we live in a society that's all based on your planning. You plan to get to certain points in life, but God is trying to do stuff that, you know what? We might not know about it yet. And you probably are not going to meet anybody that's going to convince you that that's exactly how it's going to play out. But if you can learn to trust him, then now you'll get the power, the authority, the victory. Once again, the enemy is trying to keep you from this. Now let's go over to Colossians, Colossians chapter two. Colossians chapter two. Uh, and let's yeah, let's look at eight through ten in the Amplified. So he says, see to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captive by the so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit. If anybody starts trying to get into this stuff, just cut them off. Yeah. Cut them off, man. They're talking all that gibberish, man. I don't want to hear it. You know, we got to simplify it. Don't be trying to use them big words. That ain't helping me. And he says, idle fancies and plain nonsense. That's what it is, right? Plain nonsense. You ever, uh, yeah, oh man, I remember this uh, when I was, you know, back in the day, they used to have the show called Live In Living Color. Y'all remember that? <laughs> And they had this one dude, he was uh, in jail. Did you guys know that one? That one character was in jail and he was using all these big words. That brother was making up words, man. He didn't know what the heck he was talking about. But there's people like that today. They're making up words, man. You know what? Uh, I saw this thing. I don't know where it was. It might have been on YouTube. But um, I think I might have looked at it because it was an older man. You know, he was, you know, 
in shape, though. And I was like, that's cool. I mean, man, he was like, you know, like mid-50s, but ripped. And so I thought, wow, he, he must be doing something good. <laughs> this brother started talking some old gibberish. <laughs> I'm telling you, he started talking about, you know, the, the guy said, well, well, where are you from? I'm from everywhere. I'm like, okay, man. Okay, brother, I'm just looking. I thought you had some good abs or something. I thought it was a little ab workout or something. You talking about I'm from everywhere. I am the, man, get out of here with that. These people are lost, man, trying to come off deep. You know what I'm saying? Deep, trying to be deep. And man, you, you in the deep end. You need to come up for some oxygen, man. But anyway, my point is, don't fall for it. Don't let these people start talking all this stuff, start trying to sound all, you know, eloquent and all this stuff. It, it, no, this, let's deal with simple truth. These idle fancies, plain nonsense. This is all plain nonsense. Following uh, human tradition. See, that's what people do. And then this is how people fall for it. They fall for, oh, how they're supposed to act in church. How they're supposed to do this. Oh, you can't wear this. You can't wear pants. You can't wear this. You know what I'm saying? There's all this stuff. Who made this stuff up? Who said that, man? I mean, you don't even wear makeup, but you as mean. I mean, you were mean as a, a lion, a starving lion. You cutting off heads. Man, you know what I'm saying? You met some, some religious folks as mean. But they, you know, they don't do anything. They got that religion all down, but don't know how to walk in love. See, this is following the traditions of men. Men's ideas of material rather than the spiritual world. Y'all see that? Men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world. A lot of times uh, in this situation here, people, they think there are these things that, that make them more religious. Okay, uh, what is it? You know what, I got to preach. If I'm going to preach, I got to have this thing. You know, you seen those robes and stuff? You guys seen those robes and they come out there, man, and they got the long robes and... The long, just, I'm like, what all? I mean, man, what's that all about? You know what I mean? Well, you got it. You got a lot of that. A lot of robes, and then you got a lot of, like, cloths and stuff people use. You seen that? You guys seen the little special, you know, special cloths and stuff that people, you know, do. Uh, I remember one time, um, me and my wife were watching this. One lady preaching, and I mean, she might have been in a conference that we were at, but she's talking about all this stuff that she, you know, was in her prayer, like for the conference. But then she started describing it, and we were like, hmm, this is getting a little weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's okay. And she started talking all this stuff, how she had the house set up or the room, and it was all this. And, you know, I was on the floor rolling for y'all. I'm like, you ain't got to roll all like that for me, man. I don't need, you ain't got to be rolling around for me when Jesus died on the cross for me. Amen. Just give me some scripture that I can highlight and go back and meditate on. Let me tell about I was just rolling and tussling. And you have people, man, they, they eat that up. They think, oh, this is, she's so spiritual. And, and then you have people like goosebumps shaking. And, and the person will just be up there just saying, just making up stuff. You know, they'll just be talking and jack in the box. <laughs> and everybody, whoo, glory. <laughs> I'm like, people falling for this stuff, man. This is ridiculous. This is what this is saying. So I'm telling you, man, if you if you clicking on the TV and somebody doing all this stuff, man, and they trying to get you to buy some water or something, you buy this water and put this water. You know, don't buy that water, man. That, that water ain't going to work for you. Man, they, they got all kind of stuff, cloths and stuff. Buy this little cloth and this cloth is going. That cloth ain't doing nothing. Man, I wish that sometimes you wish they had a hotline. You say, y'all got a hotline, I'm calling in. That don't work. <laughs> we don't need none of that. Think about it. You got Jesus. Amen. I mean, you got Jesus. Now, I'm going to help you before we close. You got Jesus, not just outside. You got him in you. Amen. So, no clothes are going to make you holy. You can't get a pair of shoes that's going to all of a sudden have you walking closer to God. 
You can't get no new suit, no hat. No, I just, I hear from the Lord when I wear this hat. Ain't no hat making you hear from God. I ain't gonna, you know, I go when I pray, I like to pray on this one mountain and I like to point this way. I hear God, man, you can hear God in your car. You just open up your ears, man. God will talk to you when everybody else is talking. He's talking to you. You don't have to go to some special people doing all this stuff. They're just, just trying their best to get a hold of God. And God's like, it ain't that hard. I've been talking to you. You haven't been listening. Some people think that, you know, God's going to speak and he's going to sound like Charlton Heston or something. You know, and they say, well, I didn't hear it yet because it's, you know. He didn't come with a roaring, thunderous voice. Man, God will talk to you in a dream. God will talk to you a lot of times. He'll talk to you when you're busy doing something. You'll be doing something, he'll just tell you, and you go, whoa, okay. See, Jesus is taking all the struggle out of all of this. But we can't be some people that's so looking for all this religious mumbo jumbo. Amen? Amen. I, I, I need to get off this, but I got, this is one of my things. I'm like, all these spiritually deep people, man. Man, I'll be wanting to home in the clown sock them sometimes. I'm telling you. When people just be like, yeah, well, you know. I know you know. This is, it ain't that hard. Get out of here with all that. I was just the Lord. And no, that wasn't the Lord. Because the Lord is not all complicated like that. Ain't no strangeness with God. You know what I'm saying? I just felt the breeze. That might have been a, a demon coming up in your house, man, or something. <laughs> just a cool breeze. Come on, man. It's always according to this. Simple truth. That's all you got to do. You want to know if God's talking to you? Find a scripture to back up what he just told you. If you can't find a scripture to back it up, that wasn't God. That wasn't God. You know, God will give you, he'll tell you something, he'll back it up with the word and he'll take all, there won't be no antics, no nothing. It'll just be, oh, wow, that's simple. See, that's what God wants. He wants us all thriving in this. All of us walking in this victory. And so uh, we got to not be tricked by all this, this traditional stuff, men's ideas, the material rather than the spiritual world, just crude notions uh, following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and this uh, disregarding the teachings of Christ. See that? For in him, the whole fullness of the deity, here it is, the deity of Christ, but it's not just outside of you, it's in you, the full deity of the Christ, the, the full deity, the Godhead continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. So all of this is inside of us. You are complete in him made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ. You too are filled. Look at this. You too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and reach full spiritual stature. And he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. Wait, all this is in me. I don't need nobody rolling around for me. No, you can roll around for somebody else. I was tearing in this for tear for somebody else. I don't need no tearing for me. I just up all night, pastor, just all night. Pray. No, go to sleep. I don't need you up all night praying for me. I got the father, the son and the Holy Ghost. Dwelling in me. Y'all y'all, getting this? What's that going to do to your confidence? I'm telling you, you'll shut a devil down, man. you shut a devil down real quick. You know, you shut these spiritually weird people down. You just silence them. I'm up in here, man, with the full Godhead on me. I'm filled. Don't be talking to me unless you came to get saved Amen. and delivered. I'm going to cast out the devil. <laughs> you won't have nobody want to hang out with you. <laughs> they say, woo, he just too, he too much. All right, well, now, y'all get this. This is, uh, you know, simple teaching tonight, but we get this. So now, 
we don't have to understand all that. Like, OK, Lord, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how you could be three and one and all that. But just understand this. You got Jesus. Amen. Receive Jesus as Lord. Then guess what? You're going to get the Holy Ghost. And then now you're connected since Jesus already paid your sin debt. Guess what? Now you get the Father, Son, Holy Ghost all dwelling in you. You are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. So what does it mean? You walk around this earth no matter where you go. You're never alone ever again. You always running four deep. No matter where you go, you always running four deep. You, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Any devils want some action? What y'all want to do? You want to get it in? Can we get it in tonight? What's going on? We would have no one afraid if you caught revelation of this. Now, they might mock it. They might debate it. They might try to run circles or, or, or be, you know, bring confusion about it. But all will know one day. All, look at your name and say all. Oh, yeah. Even the worst critics, the mockers, all this stuff, they will all know. Let's close on this scripture. Revelation 1, 5 through 8. This right here is powerful, man. Make sure you stay with Jesus, church. Stay in your word. Stay connected. Don't fall for no spiritual weird stuff. Let's look at it in uh, King James first. And then I'll, I just want to we'll look at verse 8 in the message. But King James first. Okay, here it is. And from Jesus Christ, this is what he's saying, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. He was the first one to raise like that. And the prince, and that's, that's speaking of that spiritual death, and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And so what this means is he took on. So y'all remember, he did not want to take on man's sin. Well, when he took on that, he was disconnected from the father. But yet he rose from that. See that? Nobody else has ever done that. Now, I know he raised Lazarus from the dead and all that. That's different. This right here, he took on man's sin and God, the father turned his back. And so he was cut off. Now, nobody else is getting up like that. If they if they die and they cut off from God like that, they are staying in that state. Amen. But now, because of what Jesus did, you and I can receive this new birth. And so we were dead men walking, dead women walking, and now we can be reborn. Amen. And so he says here, uh, and he has... Uh, Go back to verse five again. He's washed us from our sins. Yeah, let me see. Okay, okay. Witness first one. Unto him that loved us and, okay, next verse. And he washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse six. And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. This is powerful. Behold, here it is. He cometh with the clouds. So everybody's going to believe. They're going to have to believe one day. Behold, he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him. Look at your name and say every eye. Every eye. Oh, I don't believe in that. I don't know. Okay, you're going to believe on this day. Because everybody's going to see it. Every eye shall see him and they shall, even those that pierced him, they're going to see him too. All kindreds of the earth shall wail. Look at this. Because of him. Even so, amen. So every kindred, they're going to well, they're going to be tormented because he's coming back. And he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. That's who he says he is. That's who we need to be looking forward to seeing when he returns, let's look at that in the message. Just that verse eight. You don't want to miss this. This is what the master says. The master declares, I am a to Z. You got people been following after all kind of stuff. All these, uh, 
different gods. And, you know, they got, man, when I went to India, they, I think they got over three million gods. That's ridiculous. And Jesus is going to come back saying, I am A to Z. I am the God who is, the God who was, and the God about to arrive. I am the sovereign strong. Isn't that awesome? Now, this is who we're looking forward to seeing. So we don't need to debate. We just need to believe it. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced of this. I'm not willing to give up my rights and privileges. I'm not willing to give up my blood bought position. I'm not willing to give it up. I want to let God's power manifest. So now as we continue in this, we're going to grow because we got it. And then you're going to start to see all this strength coming upon you and greater manifestations of God's power. This is going to happen through your life. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's close in prayer tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us, blessing us to be here. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that we learn who you are, but also who we are. And we just receive the fullness of all that you have for us. Maybe you're at home watching this right now and you don't know Jesus as Lord. You don't have to have a great understanding of all of this. You just got to say yes. You've just got to be willing to let God have his way in your life. The only way into this is through Jesus. There's no shortcuts, no side entrances or anything. It's just only through Jesus. The only way to come to the Father is through the Son. You've got to receive him. So I would just ask that you would make this your time to receive him as Lord. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message, no matter where they are, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet. Amen. Man. So, so can you guys handle that? Having the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all dwelling with you? I want you to step into tomorrow. Matter of fact, let's start out with sleeping good tonight. You know, when you go to sleep, say, I got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in me. Boy, so you ought to really rest. You don't have to worry about anything. Amen. And you don't need somebody to come along to connect you. You're already connected. Amen. Amen. We catch revelation of this, man. We're going to start getting so many answers. So much stuff coming to us just because we realize what we have. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Lord, as we leave this place, we're excited about our future. I decree and declare that we would prosper and thrive in you. And that we would be those good commercials. Continue to minister to us and give us greater revelation of who you are and who we are in you. We thank you and we praise you now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen.